Hi, I'm Christy. Welcome to Weird and Witchy Shit, a place for, well, Weird and Witchy Shit. Here we talk about everything from the magic of yoga, rituals, tarot, crystals, astrology, self-love, mental health, spiritual stuff, spooky things and anything of the mystical variety. So if that sounds like the kind of shit you're into, then you're in the right place my friends. Welcome to the coven. It feels very weird to be actually sitting down and recording something. So the last time something was on my channel was actually only about 10 days ago or something. But for me, it has probably been like over three months since I actually sat and recorded something because like I was away for two months. If you care at all about that, I do have a second channel where I kind of spoke about that briefly and done like a little bit of like vloggy stuff. It's just more like chill stuff over there. Anyway, I am really glad to be back and today we are back on our Greek mythology bullshit. And we are talking about one of ancient Greece's most iconic and well-loved heroes, Heracles. Or Hercules. Whatever you fancy calling him, I'm going to call him Heracles. I think it originally was Heracles in like Greek tales, but then it was kind of changed to Hercules uh, when it got Romanized. So... I'm going to stick to Heracles. Most people probably know the story of Heracles to some degree and I have touched on it in other videos such as when I spoke about the many, 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 many lovers of Zeus. But today we are focusing on Heracles himself and his super weird relationship with Hera where they are the worst of enemies and then eventually it all does come around and they become good friends in the end after a lot, a lot of shit. I actually am doing this episode in two different parts and the reason being is um, I uh, edit everything on my iPad but my storage on my iPad isn't very good and I felt like this video was going to be quite long and sometimes if it is very long it doesn't actually let me like save the video so then I have to like kind of go back and delete half of it and whatever so just for my own mental health i feel like it's best to to just do it in two parts and i also do want to say like i normally do with all of these greek mythology episodes there are a million different variations of these stories the characters the timelines and the events can vary quite greatly the idea of this is it is mythology so um it's kind of part history and part your own interpretation of it and how stories have been passed down through generations. So I am going to be telling the version of the story that I resonate most with but just know that there are other variations of the story out there. But I think in every version one thing is clear and that's that Hera and Hercules are the ultimate enemies to friends story and the journey is a long and treacherous one of death, heartbreak, gods, impossible challenges, heroes, villains and giants. So let's dive in. Heracles is one of the many illegitimate children of Zeus who is of course the king of the gods and the husband and brother to the queen of the gods Hera. He was conceived when Zeus tricked a mortal woman by the name Alcamene. She was also the great granddaughter of the hero Perseus and she was a married woman. Zeus tricked her into having sex with him by disguising himself as her husband. The very next night her real husband Amphitron came home and they had sex but by that time Alcamene was already pregnant to Zeus and then she also became pregnant to Amphitron at the same time so she was pregnant with twins of sort but not by the same father. One of those babies being a regular baby and one of these babies of course being a half god. Hera was understandably not incredibly happy about this and obviously she was much more pissed off when her loving husband announced the day before Alcamene was due to give birth that the next descendant of Perseus who was born would be the rightful heir and leader of Mycenae. Obviously Zeus assuming that the next baby that would be born would be his baby to Alcamene and Hera 
was not going to let that happen. So Hera asked her daughter Elethea, who is the goddess of childbirth, to stop Alcamini's babies from coming out. So basically what happened was Elethea went in close, close proximity to Alcamini and she sat with her legs crossed and being this close to the goddess of childbirth while she sat in this position basically stopped Alcamini from being able to push the babies out and Hera had hoped that not only would this delay the labour but that it would actually suffocate the babies as well. Elsewhere in the world another woman was also pregnant and this baby also happened to be a descendant of Perseus but this woman was only seven months pregnant so Alethea under the order of Hera induced this woman's labour and the baby, the descendant of Perseus, was born. And by Zeus's word, this baby was now the rightful leader of Mycenae. This baby would be called Eurythseus and he would become king of Mycenae and as we'll find out later on, he does have quite a big part to play in the legend of Heracles. Much to Hera's disappointment, Alcamini did eventually manage to give birth to her babies and she named those babies Epicles and Alcides. And also I'm just going to say here, my pronunciation, I say it all the time, my pronunciation of Greek names is truly atrocious. I am trying my best. It's not that I haven't looked them up or tried to learn them. It's just like I actually like won't go in my brain and I don't know if it's also like with my accent, it's really, really hard to say, but I am trying. I know I'm not perfect. The birth of Zeus's new son didn't put a stop to Hera's hatred for the literal infant. In fact, it was only the beginning of Hera's long and venomous fight for revenge. When Epicles and Alcides were babies, they were both very similar to each other and it wasn't entirely clear which one was the son of a god and which one was the son of a mortal. Just literally two babies chilling, having a bud. Well, you know, almighty goddesses try to murder them for just being alive. Until Hera sent two vipers to murder the babies and hearing the terrified screams coming from the baby's room during the night, Alcamini came rushing in to find Epicles to be the baby who was screaming in fear and um, Alcides was casually playing with two dead serpents that he had effortlessly strangled and from that moment on it was quite clear who the who the child of Zeus was. What was also clear to Alcamini was that Hera wasn't just going to let this go. Like not only did she want her baby dead but she like really really wanted her baby dead. So in an attempt to win Hera over she decided to change Alcides name to Heracles which means pride or glory of Hera. I'm sorry, but I do actually find this like so mental on so many levels because I mean, everything in Greek mythology is a little bit mental, but I find it mental because if somebody literally tried to kill my baby, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, like, okay, to win her over, I'm going to um, name my baby after her. And also on the flip side of that, if somebody had a baby with my husband and then she was like, yeah, I'm going to name the baby after you. I'd be like, are you fucking joking? It seems that Hera felt quite similarly to I did, although she does tend to take it to the extreme levels. I'm not here killing babies. So Heracles grew up and was obviously quite different to his mortal brother, Epicles. And um, Epicles was just a normal mortal boy whereas Her Heracles grew up to be one of the biggest and strongest people in the world. Most accounts of Heracles including Disney actually always give me the impression that he is like a little bit of a himbo like he has this superhuman strength that he's not like super in control of and he's like a little bit clumsy and not that he's stupid but just like he's not the brightest star in the constellation if you catch my drift. Heracles also had a raging temper that he found very hard to control 
almost like he would have the temper tantrums of a child but he was a demigod so the repercussions of these temper tantrums would be huge and then after his tantrums he would feel super guilty about how he had acted when he was in like these fits of blind rage and he would he would carry that guilt with him until the next time it would happen which is super toxic go to therapy but his strength did have its positives of course because he grew up to be a great warrior who fought in battle on the side of king creon of thebes which earned him the hand of the king's daughter Megara. Friends call her Meg, at least they would if she had any friends. Heracles and Megara, it is said, were madly in love and had some children together. I don't know how many. By some accounts it was two, some it was three, some it was four, and some it was eight. Um, these are all very popular stories. It doesn't really matter. They were in love and they had an amount of children with each other. All of the years that passed never softened Hera's heart to Hercules. If anything, it made her feel more resentful of him that he was just out there living his life and her hatred for him just grew more and more as the years passed. And this would result in deadly consequences when Hera decided to strike a madness upon Heracles and this madness would stop him from recognising his own family and made him see his wife and his own children as enemies that he was in a battle against. Of course, Megara and his children had absolutely no power against the great and mighty Heracles, so he killed them. He overpowered them, he killed Megara and he killed his kids. And as soon as they were all dead, the spell of madness was lifted and he had seen what he had done. Obviously, this sends Heracles into a pit of despair, grief and self-hatred and at this point he even considers ending his own life rather than living with what he had done. And the only thing that really got Heracles through was the knowledge that one day he would be reunited with his wife and children in the afterlife but he also felt like because of what he'd done he wouldn't deserve to be with them in the afterlife until he did something to cleanse him of his sins. He felt like he needed adequate punishment for what he had done before he would be able to be with his family in the underworld. And he knew that if he took his life now, he would never be able to atone for these sins. So that's when he goes to the Oracle Apollo for some guidance on what to do to make up for his crimes and the Oracle advises that he go and visit King Eurystheus who if you remember was the child who was the descendant of Perseus who was born and became leader of Mycenae because of Hera's intervention. King Eurystheus who I believe was acting as Hera's little puppet, commanded that Heracles repent for his sins by completing 10 what he hoped would be impossible labours and these would become known as the labours of Heracles. 10 labours over the course of 10 years and of course it was Hera's hope that Heracles would die at the first labour. Labour number one, the Nemean lion. In the city of Nema lived a mighty and ferocious lion with skin as strong as steel and claws as sharp as swords. Say that three times fast. Many great warriors had tried and failed to kill this lion resulting in their own death. No, no human weapons seemed to be able to penetrate this lion's skin. Arrows would simply just bounce back off of it. Swords would bend and like I said, everybody who did try and challenge the beast was killed. So naturally, Eurystheus had decided that this would be the first labour for Heracles to kill the Nemean lion. Heracles soon realised that weapons were just a waste of time and to just cut the middleman out so to speak he took the lion by the throat and strangled it to death um i guess it was like a little bit of a fight for him but i mean 
he was one of like the greatest warriors that ancient Greece had ever seen. So if anybody was going to take it out, it was going to be him. And he did, and he was successful. Good. Don't condone violence against animals, but in this context, um rooting for Heracles and then as a trophy for his kill he decided to wear the lion's skin to remove the skin from the lion's body he had to use one of its own claws to cut the skin apart and open it up because its claws were the only thing that was sharp enough to penetrate it and when Heracles returned to King Eurystheus not only alive and well but wearing the skin of this like deadly lion that nobody else could kill and um, Eurystheus was a fucking wreck he was an absolute mess and he became so terrified of Heracles that he demanded that all future evidence of his completion of the labours be done so from outside of the gates of the kingdom and he was just like stay the hell away from me and he would also tell Heracles in future through a, through a messenger. It's like, you stand over there and I'll get this guy to come to me. I'll tell him what to tell you. And then, so, like, you know. And so afraid was the mighty king of Heracles that he buried a bronze jar in the earth that he could hide in just in case Heracles showed up. Labour number two, the Lernaean Hydra. Echidna, the half woman, half snake, known as the She Viper, had a child with Typhon, a serpentine giant, and that child was the Hydra, who was a water monster with nine snake like heads that, when one was cut off, two more would appear. So, naturally, Heracles next labour was to defeat the Hydra. Luckily for Heracles he didn't have to take on the Hydra by himself as his nephew Iolus would join him on this mission but unluckily for Heracles though the Hydra also had a friend in the form of a giant crab. This crab managed to clamp down on Heracles' foot and injure him quite badly but Heracles um, quickly managed to just kill the crab either by stepping on it or by bashing it with a club. So it slowed him down but the little crab basically didn't do too much damage. Well, it was, it was a big crab but I still think in terms of ratio from crabs to demigods he was probably still quite short. Heracles bashed in eight of the mortal heads of the Hydra with a club and after he did Iolus burned the severed necks with a torch which prevented the heads from growing back again. However the ninth head of the Hydra was immortal so he um, decided to chop that head off and he buried it underground so that it was as close to dead as it would get. But before burying the monster, Heracles slit it open and dipped the tips of his arrows into the Hydra's blood which contained a venomous poison. Remember this. Labour number three, the Cernian Hind. So the Cernian hind was a beautiful red coloured deer with antlers of gold and hooves of bronze. She was quick, agile and clever, much like her owner Artemis. Artemis was the goddess of the hunt and Heracles really didn't want to piss her off because he had had enough of goddesses who hate him and are making his life a living hell. So even though his labour was to capture this hind and to bring it back to the king, um, Heracles doesn't want to kill or injure the hind. After a year of chasing the deer, he managed to outrun and capture her, but on his way to take her back to Eurystheus, he bumped into Artemis and her twin brother Apollo, who were less than pleased with what they were seeing. What do you mean you're taking my fucking deer? Their initial thought was of course to punish Heracles for stealing and instead of arguing back he completely, Heracles completely admitted defeat and he was like listen I am so sorry that I am stealing from you. Here's the deal here. I've been set these labours. Here is why it all kind of started with 
Hera, she like hates me, she wants me dead, blah blah blah. And actually, Artemis and Apollo really sympathised with him. In fact, they knew a thing or two about the wrath of Hera because Artemis and Apollo themselves were also illegitimate children of Zeus. So their relationship with Hera was turbulent at best. It wasn't quite as bad as what Hera and Hercules relationship was because that that was bad, like that was bad bad. Um, But they weren't her biggest fan and she wasn't theirs either so I'm sure they just also wanted a little excuse to just piss her off. So Artemis said that Heracles could take and borrow her hind to take back to the king but as long as he brought her back safe then there would be absolutely no issue and that's exactly what Heracles did. Sorted. Labour number three is done. Labour number four, the Erymanthian boar. As the name suggests, this was a boar and a particularly bad-tempered one at that. Every day he would rampage, ruining everything that got in his way, killing everyone and destroying everything in its path. So it was causing a bit of a pain for everybody to be honest. Heracles' job was to bring the boar back to Mycenae alive. And as difficult as that sounds to like me or you, let's call a pig a pig, Heracles wasn't exactly intimidated. So he decided to take take a little break during this one. He was like, okay, like, I've been going through a lot, I'm going to take a little break before I go and get this little pig and take it back. I'm just going to go and visit my friend Pholus. Pholus was a centaur and he was most pleased to see Heracles show up. So he cooked them both dinner, they were enjoying a lovely night together and eventually Heracles asked if he could have a glass of wine and Pholus told him that he was worried about opening up this wine because it actually belonged to the other centaurs and centaurs are notorious for having a very bad temper. They could be very violent and very protective of their wine. Heracles, willing to take the risk, opened it anyway. And soon enough, as predicted, the centaurs came rushing through and started attacking Heracles and he retaliated, of course, by fighting them back and shooting arrows at them, which, if you remember, were tipped with the Hydra blood, which was incredibly poisonous. One centaur who was not part of the fight got caught in the crossfire when Heracles wounded him with one of his arrows, and this centaur was Chiron, who was actually immortal, but the pain of this wound was so severe that he actually gave up his immortality and chose to die rather than living with the pain of this wound forever. Bolus was really confused as to how one little arrow could take down such a big great creature, so he pulled the arrow out of one of the dead centaurs to have a look at it, but then he dropped the arrow down and onto his foot, which immediately killed him. So Heracles did get to have a glass of wine, but at what cost, Heracles? At what cost? Anyway, once that was over, Heracles buried his friend and he set off to get the boar, which, as predicted, was an easy enough task for him to do. So he tired the boar out, caught it in a net and brought it back to Eurystheus, who was also so frightened of the boar that once again he went and hid in his little bronze jar. Labour number five, the Augean stables. So this labour was a little bit... Uh, different for Heracles so there was no slaying, killing or capturing involved in this one and um, instead he just had to do a little bit of manual labour you know the old 95 stuff. His task here was to clean out the entire Augean stables which was owned by King Augeus who just happened to own more cattle than anyone else in the whole of Greece. So it was Heracles' task to clean out all of these huge, 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 huge stables in 
just one day. So Heracles goes to King Augeas and decides to not tell him that he's doing this because of the labours and because King Eurythseus had um, told him to do it because, you know, like kings and their like silly little rivals, like Heracles thought that it was just best for everybody involved to to not mention King Eurythseus in any way and just say that he was offering his services of cleaning these stables out. So he says, okay, um, I'm going to do you a big favour and you're going to do me a favour back or you're just going to pay me for my services rather. I'm going to clean out the entirety of your stables in one day and in return you're going to give me a tenth of your cattle as payment. Makes sense. Works as a motive for wanting to clean and cattle is money baby so the king agreed. The king also had a young son who absolutely worshipped Heracles as a lot of young boys in ancient Greece did. He really did go from zero to hero with uh, these, these labours and he was really at celebrity status right now. Everybody kind of knew what Heracles was up to. Everybody knew all about his labours and a lot of young children really were looking up to him and this little boy was no different. So he asked that he go with Heracles as he cleaned the stables. He got to spend some time with his idol and the king thought that this was a really good idea because um, maybe it would, it would teach him about some hard work. It would teach him about a hard day's graft. So yeah, the little boy went and joined Heracles as he cleaned out these stables. But if you thought that Heracles was going to be like getting on his hands and knees and scrub, 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 and you were absolutely wrong because there was no way possible that these stables were going to be cleaned in as short a time as one day just by normal methods. So first Heracles tore a hole in the front wall of the cattle yard and then he tore another hole in the back wall of the cattle yard and after that he dug a wide trench to the nearby river so that the water could flow in the wall of the in the hole of the front wall and out the back wall taking all the dirt and debris with it. Easy as that the stables were done. Why didn't I think of that? Unfortunately, King Augeas found out about Eurythseus' involvement and he refused to pay Heracles the cattle that he had earned and he also denied ever even saying that he would pay him in the first place and he says that um, if you don't like that I'm not paying you then you can always take me to court and actually that's exactly what Heracles did. Now the payment obviously wasn't like the main part of the task but an agreement's an agreement and yeah I can totally see Heracles point like give me my fucking cattle I done my job now you you do yours. But what the king didn't see happening was his own son testifying against him and saying that he was there when his father agreed that he would give Heracles one tenth of his cattle if he cleaned out the stables in one day. That's exactly what Heracles did. So yeah, he kind of stood up and was like, my dad's literally such a liar. So eventually he did have to pay up. Heracles got the te- got his tenth of the cattle and the king and his son's relationship was destroyed forever because he got sent away to go and live with family members. But at least Heracles cleaned the stables and completed one more labour. Labour number six, the Stymphalian birds. So, drive away a flock of birds. Sounds easy enough, right? Well, these birds were not just like regular, normal birds. They were actually huge man-eating birds who had bronze claws, metallic feathers that they could launch at you at will, and they also had poisonous poop. They also lived on marshy land that Heracles couldn't walk across because it wouldn't be able to take his weight. Heracles actually had no idea how he was going to complete this one but two other step siblings were about to come to his rescue and that was Athena, goddess of wisdom and warfare and daughter of Zeus but not of Hera. Athena was actually the favourite of all of Zeus's children which Hera 
of course didn't love. So Athena knew very well what it was like to be disliked by Hera. And the other step sibling to come to his rescue was Hesphiatus. So he was the god of craftsmen, of blacksmiths and of carpenters. And actually he was Hera's child and also Zeus's child as well. But um, he also knew a thing or two about how much of a fucking bitch Hera could be because he was so ugly when he was born that she literally threw him away. He eventually did make his way back to Mount Olympus um, but that's like a whole other story on its own. So he made a rattle for Heracles which was pretty similar to a castanet. Um, this rattle was known as a crotala and he made this specifically for Heracles and he gave it to Artemis. Artemis came on down and gave it to Heracles and he used this rattle to scare the birds out of the marshy swamp where they were resting. And when they flew up and into the air, he shot them down with his slingshot, meaning that he had completed his sixth labour. Now that we are at the end of labour number six, I feel like this is a good place to call it for the end of this video. If you've enjoyed it and you would like to see part two, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It won't be too long until part two is out and I'll see you then. Bye. If you'd like to continue the conversation, you can get me on Instagram at Christie's underscore coven. That's K-R-I-S-T-Y-S underscore coven. You can also find me on YouTube at Christie's Coven where I post a lot of free yoga classes and shit like that and I'd love to have you join because it's not a coven if it's just me and until next time, bye!